Hello, everyone. Uh, Magdalena here today with my good friend, Dr. Anna Kabeka. We are talking about something a little different today, something that I actually haven't talked about before, and that is um, something about that really helps your pelvis, your private, friend, the Anna very Kabeka. feminine. We're talking about something a little different today. Something that oh, I actually no. Have. Okay. This is now this is working now. Let me show everybody um, Dr. Anna Kabeka as well. There we go and her big, beautiful smile. So I wanna tell you about um, just this really interesting experience. As you know, I always like to bring in information to the community, something that is, that's gonna be really helpful for everyone, but also that's something that intrigues me, that I think is gonna be um, has, having a wide appeal to, to the community. And so one of the things that grabbed my attention was that there were a number of women who started talking about using a cream that really helped them with incontinence. And that was, so that was their thing, it was incontinence, right? So in case you don't know, it's basically involuntary peeing, you can't control it. And, uh, and so I, I, I asked what was the cream and they said, Julva, and I'm like, Julva? I think I know Julva because Dr. Anna Kabeka, who is a friend, is actually the formulator of Julva. <laughs> so I thought it would only make sense to bring you in here and talk about this really great product because we've given away a lot of samples and we've been getting some really, really, really cool feedback on it. So before we talk about the product itself, can you tell us a little bit about, you got a long story of taking care of women and, and what made you create that product? Oh yeah, no, it is a long story. So I'm a you know board certified gynecologist and obstetrician. I'm actually triple board certified now. So I'm board certified in anti-aging or regenerative medicine. And then recently by the American Board of Integrative Medicine as well. But I trained in obstetrics and gynecology at Emory University in Atlanta. And I came to St. Simons Island, Southeast Georgia area and Darien, Georgia, a shrimping village as a National Health Service Corps scholar. So my first, like my first week in practice, I swear, I had this beautiful silver haired foxy woman, 63 years old, come in and complaining of vaginal dryness and had a history of ductal carcinoma in situ and was not allowed any hormone therapy. And she's like, Hey, Dr. Anna, you know, what can you do? Because I'd rather die than live this way. I'm dry as a desert. I feel horrible. I have no attraction to my partner. And, you know, I'd rather die than live this way. And so I had to research what could I do. So that started me in my journey in bioidentical hormones, the safety of androgens, testosterone, DHEA in women with, you know, the, our most highest risk women, women with breast cancer, right? If it's safe for them, it's going to be safe for the rest of us. And in fact, we're finding really good beneficial results on the arms of prevention and using some androgen therapy and definitely looking at, you know, in, in the work of Dr. Rebecca, Rebecca Glazer, who's a breast surgeon, using androgen therapy in risk in um, re reducing recurrence in patients with breast cancer. So we're getting really great results. And in recognizing this. So way back at early on in my practice, I started using vaginal hormone therapy, androgen therapy in women. And, um, and so I was a, a very, you know, avid prescriber of vaginal hormone therapies, especially as a surgeon, really creating good vaginal health. So I would have good tissue to operate on and learn, like, for example, in a sling procedure or bladder incontinence procedures. And as I became more, um, I, as I developed more expertise in this, I would use vaginal hormones and lo and behold, my patient wouldn't need surgery because her symptoms wow. would go away. And so, wow. yeah, so that was great, great for the client. So you're and, talking about, you're talking about a surgery for incontinence. Is that right? it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's where I really developed some expertise in working with vaginal hormones plus for sexual health. Again, with that first patient way back in 1999, and, um, and that kind of spurred on my career in bioidentical hormones. And, and that's where I felt um, creating work-life balance, right? As women, we wear many hats, but, and I believe we can have it all, but not at the same time. So I retired my clinical <laughs> practice a couple years ago and my patients were like, wait, no one will give us this therapy. So I worked to create something over the counter that is safe and effective. DHEA has no black box warnings compared to estrogen and testosterone. Mm. And it's this cosmetic cream that's over the counter that uses plant stem cells from the Alpine rose, which is this beautiful rose that grows in the ice and snows in the Swiss Alps and is a great anti-aging cosmetic cream as well. So I'm like, it's perfect for our flower. <laughs> 
So we got the plant stem cells in there and then some good emollient ingredients that really help with nourishing, moisturizing the tissue. And what I hear from clients over and over again, it helps with you know, libido, it helps just revitalizing the pelvic, you know, the vaginal tissue, the vulvar tissue, the natural moisture, restoring that natural moisture because our hormones decline. DHEA, for instance, climbs, decline, peaks in our 20s and starts to decline. And it's an important hormone for muscle, for bones, for breast. As you can see, Magdalena, I'm just passionate about this product. I think it's just, you know, a passion about giving women solutions to mm. problems versus yeah. procedures, right? Yeah. So um, can I tell you about my personal experience with Jillville? Please. So when I first started it, it was when I still had a lot of hip problems, right? So my pelvis was so inflamed. I tried it for a few days and I was just like, you know what? I don't even desire sex at this point because I'm in so much pain. So I put it aside because you sent me the sample like probably a year ago. And then, and then I tried, tried doing it again, tried, tried using it again, um, starting about a week ago, preparing for this call, knowing that we're going to have this, this call together. And, um, and it's really nice. Like it's, and I love these Facebook, like, especially with these women communities, like we talk about poops and incontinence, like periods, like things that you can never talk about it would be so politically incorrect to talk about. Right. But here we go. So I just felt so nice and plump. <laughs> How does that happen? Like, what is, what is, what is in here that really helps to bring Cause it felt like there was a blood flow increase, right. In, in yeah. those areas. Yeah. What, so what's, what's causing, I mean, what, where, what's causing this? Yeah, well, I believe it's a combination of the ingredients, certainly the plant stem cells, we know that that can help with circulation as well as DHEA. Mm. So getting to the, you know, getting to improve the condition of the, you know, of the vulvar area and I tell clients to use it from the clitoris down to the anus because our anal tissue gets fragile get, gets fissures gets hemorrhoids so we want to keep that healthy the anti anti-aging aspects of that so improving improving blood flow circulation kind of that little stimulation that yeah. goes with um signaling healthy healthy cells healthy cell repair too so I'm curious why are you using DHEA because in my mm -hmm. earlier practice, you know, we, I would work sometimes with women who have this problem. And typically we see that you talked about decline of DHEA. There's also a decline of estrogen, right? So a lot mm -hmm. of the vaginal creeds contain estriol. Um, why did you decide to go with DHEA rather than estrogen? Well, number one, est you know, typically the, all the prescription creams are estradiol or estriol if you're using a compounded cream as well. And that, those are, estrogen is, is great for the vaginal tissue. It works on the mucosal lining, the first layer. So the work by Dr. Ferdinand Debris looking at vaginal estrogen therapy and studying the, again, Jolva to separate that, Jolva is topical, works you know, easily on the surface, right? And we get good anti-aging effect there, which clients report great vaginal recovery as well. But the work done was actually with many of, much of the research done with the initial formulations were with DHEA vaginal suppositories, looking at the improvement of all three layers to the, muco to the muscular layer. So as a gynecologist, when I would use, um, you know, when I would see clients who were coming in on only estrogen, there's certainly some improvement in the mucosa, but they're still paler. It's paler skin. And it's also loss of the rugation, the natural folds and elasticity. So clients would still have bleeding after intercourse, irritation, mm -hmm. pain, painful sex, decreased orgasm. But when we used at androgen, such as DHEA, which is a precursor to testosterone and, um, or testosterone itself, we'd get an improvement. Oh my gosh, an improvement in the rugation an improvement in the folds, improvement of the elasticity, increase of your own natural lubrication, which is better than anything else. Right. Yeah. And, um, and so that that's made a difference. And so that was key. Plus DHEA has been over the counter in the United States for years and years and years. And we looking, we're looking at the safety studies, like I said, a comfort level and using in clients with their oncologist approval in patients who have had breast cancer. 
So we're really feeling some good safety. And again, our DHA level naturally declines. A little bit goes a long way and it really does depend on the formula and the combination. I've tried many different, I mean, you know, on the, on, like I would say on the bench for four years, looking at different formulations, different combination. You know, you're a, you're a chemist, right? With food and herbs, there's a way to mix and combine ingredients that give you an overall benefit. I found this combination and the way that I formulate it makes you know, the best outcome possible. And I have to tell you, I mean, it smells, it smells beautiful. It smells like honey and rose. Oh, I love that. Like yeah, it I was doesn't like, oh. smell chemical. It doesn't smell weird. Obviously it doesn't have anything that's harmful like phthalates or parabens and none of that, none of those nasty chemicals that you find in a lot of creams. I mean, this is, yeah, it just feels like, smells like such goodness. Um, so let me tell you about what the comments are that we have coming in. There's a few of them already I see. Um, Phil is asking, can you use it if you have candida? Yes. Now you want to definitely treat the candida because again, it depends on, you know, like when we have in working with any, you know, even vaginal estrogen therapies, you go from the desert to the Amazon, you create a lush environment, right? And so organisms really like that, especially yeast. And so you want to use an antifungal therapy. So the good thing is that as we recondition the, you know, the, tissue to become healthier, more, you know, plump, more vibrant, it will help repair itself and hopefully fend off some things like that. Mm -hmm. So, but you want to use an antifungal cream um, and or oral diflucan fluconazole to really um, combat yeast because some women who have had, you know, dryness or have had issues with yeast that stays dormant. And yeah. then you create this moisture either, you know, from having intercourse or from your own or with anything producing, um, a, a, you know, lesser environment, the vaginal microbiome is off balance. So we want to get added lactobacillus orally through your diet, through your nutrition, maybe vaginal probiotic and combat that imbalance of yeast. And it's a great question, but I would combat it with antifungals, over-the-counter monostat, terraconazole, prescribed fluconazole, any of those things to really get a handle on yeast and just, you know, be patient. Sometimes you need to back off a little bit with Jolva and then start, you know, start back. Done. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the questions in a second, but I want to tell everybody about, there's a link I posted right on top of the video, or I think if you're replaying is at the bottom of the video, it's always confusing with Facebook, but, um, and, and so there's a link that says, uh, try Jolva. So it's a bit.ly link, bit.ly.com slash try Jolva. And it will take you to a page that gives a um, samples, right? Free samples. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I want to really get this out to many clients and we're sending samples to doctor's offices as well that many of my medical colleagues. So this is a seven night trial size. So it comes in this very informative packaging and you get a seven night trial size. And this package is self-sealing. So it's really good in sanitizing and it's a little over seven nights and you use a pea size amount so this jolva um little packet seven nights worth tear off here and use a pea size amount or the size of a dime a flattened dime amount daily and that'll give you an idea of how well how well you like it how well you like the smell the feel the texture and that's only, what are you selling it for is like some funny amount of what 4.97 or something so yeah, the, the free, we typically, this retails on our website and on Amazon for $15.95, but we're selling, we're sending it as part of this free trial, absolutely free with just paying shipping and handling. So it's only $4.95 for shipping and handling. Okay. So yep, all within the United States, Canada is a little bit more. Okay, awesome. So let's talk a little bit about, um, oh, I got, got more questions coming in. Let me take a look at those. Um, Janice is asking, hello, is the cream topical? Yes, it is. And inside you will tell you how to exactly how to apply it. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Rhonda is saying hemorrhoids too. Uh, my doc gave me a C estriol two milligrams still haven't used. What would you say to that? So, you right. know, I definitely, I definitely would say with, you know, uh, can't give medical advice, certainly. But in cases of hemorrhoids, again, like I formulated Jolva to really be pH balanced for our perineum, right? So for our vulvar skin and it's pH balanced, you can use it from the clitoris all the way down to the anus. 
topically, just wipe it on, massage it in. You can use it as prior to foreplay, et cetera. And it has, you know, so these ingredients will help. It will not um, decrease or the effectiveness of your estriol cream. You can use that as well. So if you have hemorrhoids, there's a lot that we want to get into probiotics, not to be constipated, but you definitely want to improve the health of that tissue. And okay. I believe, you know, Jolva is not designed to treat hemorrhoids, but we're doing this anti-aging or this improving the healthy condition of your um, tissue. Hormone. Yeah. 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 You know, um, when we post, so I have this page called Hormone Thrivers and the page is for people who've done my programs in the past. And so it's a very thriving, very supportive community. And so we always give priority to people there. And we gave the 12 samples you gave us, we gave them away. And as we posted on the page saying, you know, if you were having these symptoms, then we have the samples for you. And um, a number of women came on and that was interesting because they already knew about your work um, before I even posted it there. And a number of women came on and they said, you know, they really helped them with their incontinence wow. and, and both urinary as well as from the other side. So, so yeah, so this, this stuff is, is, Really, I mean, it's you know, you, we talk a little bit about a lot about this about the form of libido increasing, right, and making us so much more excited down there. And but it's it really can be something as functional and practical as as incontinence. Um, well, yeah, and I would say that you know, while you know we haven't, we're not FDA approved to treat any medical condition. I do need to say that. But if you think of like when we, as we age, you know, and now Magdalena knows I'm 51 with a nine-year-old, right? Aging well is very important to me, and not so much of how I look. Like I don't worry about the wrinkles around my eyes or wherever. But as you think of the loss of elasticity that's happening around our eyes, around our lips, right? Like I put on red lipstick, thinking, okay. Do I have any, you know, any uh, bleeding of my lipstick, you know, they fix that, right? So you think about these things and, um, but that happens to our, to the openings of our vulvar tissue right around the urethra. So we lose that, you know, the healthy folds, the, the healthy seal that's happening too. So that's part of that. And then just being conscious, I'm doing something good for my vulva and I always encourage women now to really don't forget about exercising. I just did my Kegel exercise. So um, just do your pelvic floor exercises to really also exercise. And that combination is really helpful. Yeah. And, you know, we have to do that till we die y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I have a question for you in regards, cause I know this is going to come in. DHEA co converts to testosterone, testosterone that turns into estrogens. How safe is this for women who had estrogen receptor positive breast cancer? So if they're currently using tamoxifen, we don't recommend it. But in research, and I would publish blogs on my site, as well as current research going on in patients who have had estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, what we're looking at topically with um, DHEA application is intrinsic conversion at the cellular level. And we're not seeing systemic increases in um, estrogen. So the advantage is that again, there's no black box warning against it. So we're getting some really good positive results on it. So for women who have had, had been treated for an estrogen receptor breast cancer, and you're suffering with vaginal dryness, you know, vulvar pain, discomfort, dryness, these issues, you shouldn't have to suffer. So yeah. it's, you know, it's an option. It's definitely an option. Yeah. Awesome. That's great to know. Uh, let me take a look. And this applies to, so, you know, this is not just for us. I mean, estrogenic um, problems with estrogen also cause things like fibroids, endometriosis, terrible PMSs. So you're saying this is not going to increase our systemic estrogens or especially estradiol, that aggressive estrogen that's causing the growth of the, of the tissue. So we, we should not be worried about, about that. Yeah. We? Right. Well, this is, that's very true. And now what we have to look at again, in patients who are the most high risk population, you have to have this discussion with your doctor right. and also monitor, right? You're in a high risk population. We need to be monitoring your estrogen detoxification profiles. What is your 2,416 hydroxy estrogen getting? What is your vitamin D level? There are a lot bigger fish that we need to be concerned about, so to speak. Than um, than this, but what we want to do is promote health, right? And we know elevated levels of DHEA, just like elevated levels of vitamin D are protective against breast cancer and, and breast mm -hmm. cancer.
occurrence, but also in research dating back over two decades now, looking at vaginal estrogen therapy showed decreased morbidity and mortality in women with breast cancer. So vaginal estrogen therapy has shown a decrease in morbidity and mortality and our menopause associations and ACOG so that say that it can be used. And so we have to be cautious, but the the general feeling and the black box warning on estrogen is do not, you know, do not use this could be a cancer causing agent, but we do not this research that looks at vaginal estrogen therapy, even in women who have had breast cancer, decrease in diseases, decrease in mortality. So that's huge to know that our vagina is there to protect us, to help us and, um, and can have a benefit. We actually, there's, you know, with healthy mucosal vaginal layers, we have a healthy immune response to the vagina as we improve the microbial health, mm. healthy, healthy bacteria, lactobacillus as part of a first line of defense. Now I have a published, it's really interesting that you bring up the fibroid um, statement because we have a testimonial that's going out in my email that's actually published on my website today. Uh, that is a testimonial from a woman named Lisa, who's 64 and had tried everything. She'd been on vaginal estriol. She'd been on testosterone pellets and everything made her fibroids flare. And mm. she was continuously offered hysterectomy. So she's been using Jolva successfully for so many months without a flare in her fibroids. And in fact, quite wow. an improvement. So read that testimonial because that's what, you know, that's, that's reassuring. That's reassuring to me. Yeah. We want to do things safely and honor our body's natural composition. Yeah, nice. Um, let me go over to, so the, for those of you who are joining in late, um, the link is above or below the video, you figure it out, uh, business.com, <laughs> try Julva. It's uh, Dr. Anna Kabaka is making it available. It's a trial for seven days. It's only 497, you only pay for the shipment. If you love the product, I'm sure you get email from you, right? Um, yes. How to get the full bottle. So what I'm showing you here, just not to mislead, this is the full bottle. Can you bring up the small? The, yeah. So this is the this is the trial one. Dr. Anna is holding it right now. Um, so that's a smaller packet. You get you get that for the seven day supply. I think it's really worth trying. You know, for how inexpensive it is and for the results that it can generate. Um, and let me go over. There's another interesting question here that I think you kind of answered. But we have people coming in and out of the calls. I I don't mind repeating. Terry is saying, I have zero testosterone. Would this help? I was on testosterone therapy, but it gave me bad anxiety. Um, how, what, what would you say to that? Well, I think this would be a good option. This mm -hmm. would definitely be a good option. And again, applying it to the pelvic floor, well, it should improve the condition. You'll see an improvement without a doubt. And again, if clients have any difficulty, any issues, email my team. They email me with any questions they can't answer and really can really get good results, work through any discomfort that anyone has or any issues. And when we have a 99.9% success rate with Jolva. So we're really getting some great results. So I think I would definitely say that it's an option. Yeah. Um, and somebody, you know, sorry, just ahead. thinking because I, I was just lecturing in Arizona and in Austin, Texas this past week on sexual health and vaginal health. And one of the questions that um, I get asked often after I speak is, well, what does DHEA convert or cause acne because I've taken oral DHEA and I've got acne. I'm like, well, you know, you probably are converting to dihydrotestosterone and that's going your rapid converter. And that really depends on a few things. Stress makes us rapid converters. 5-alpha reductase makes us rapid converters. So zinc is something that we want to consider, especially if you're prone to acne, just healthy levels of zinc foods with healthy levels of zinc, but also, again, this is topical from the clitoris down to the anus. So you really should not experience and it. And it's, again, topical. So you're not going to have first pass metabolism through the liver, which is a big problem. And many people make the mistake when doing oral DHEA, not to use a um, sustained release, but also that um, they take too much, like, you know, mm -hmm one to five milligrams is typically a good place to start. But I've, you know, this often I hear people receiving 25 milligrams. I mean, rarely do we need to go up that high and that might be just to give negative feedback on cortisol or do something else. So there's other reasons that we would go up that high, but yeah, no. Yeah. Um, great. And so let's see, there is an, somebody else asking about, I'm sorry, I came in late to the discussion. What is the name of DMD? Stella is asking. The name is right there under the videos, Dr. Anna Kabeka. 
And you just won an award. Can you tell us about that? I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's like an Emmy for medicine, right? So it's, it's this huge, beautiful crystal award. My daughter, Ava, was like, oh, I feel like a winner just looking at that. That's my nine-year-old. Last night, I shared her the award. I, I just got back. So I unwrapped it. And it was so cute to see her, you know, with this award. I'm like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to embrace some of that awesome feeling. And so, um, but it is the Alan P. Mintz Award for Excellence in Age Management Medicine. And it's for exemplary service and clinical with clinical expertise and entrepreneurship. And so um, I've been in this space for, you know, uh, quite a long, quite a long time now, but, you know, I'm not Harvard, I'm not Yale and to receive, and I'm a single mom, right. To receive this award, you know, really felt so, especially since balancing getting that work-life balance, right. Was just so um, such an honor for me. Yeah. And such a surprise and such an honor. So I had my daughters in the audience. I had th my three oldest in the audience and um, it was just beautiful, beautiful yeah. to receive that. And congratulations. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. And for me teaching physicians, especially as I stepped out of my one-on-one -on -one patient care practice, teaching physicians to do what I did to really spread the knowledge and information. I give my protocols out to the doctors and everything and um, to hear their feedback and to hear what difference it's making in their lives and their enjoyment as being a doctor, as well as in the lives of their patients, because they're doing better more naturally. That's, you know, that I'm glad I made those steps. I'm glad I made those sacrifices to do that. Nice. Okay. Let me see if there's any other good questions that are coming in. And um, uh, there is, I think uh, most of the questions that are coming in, we've already answered that. So, yeah. So this is the, this is Jewel Val. Uh, link is below the video. Um, give it a try. That's a seven day supply to get it from. And then if you like it, there is going to be an option to get the full bottle. So what I'm showing you here, that's the full bottle, right? And so just not to get misled. Um, and, uh, and I shared at the beginning, if you're missing that, if you missed the initial part uh, that it has really helped me to in the, uh, in my private parts, it just becomes really nice and plump. And I like that. <laughs> I love that too. And just to let people know that that tube is 60 nights. And so typically we'll have someone use again, a half of a ML. We don't want to slather on cream, right? A little bit goes a long way, but I also am not one to go to the pharmacy every month or to go order something every month. So it's a two month supply and that's huge. And for many women, every day works great for some need it less and some need it more depending on what issues some significant patients dealing with a lot of, um, issues that have higher levels of incontinence or prolapse, and they feel like they need some more support, that may be an option. And so, um, so that's worked out really well. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you came on to talk to me about this really wonderful product. I was surprised how much, how many really great reviews we've been getting just from distributing the samples in the Hormone Thrivers community. So that's very encouraging. And it's worked for me just within a week. So I can't wait to see what happens next week. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you so much for sharing this information and not being afraid to talk about it, Magdalena. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Anna.